Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise if you're alive and breathing today. And y'all look amazing. Look at the person next to you and say, you look really good today. Come on, let them know. Say, you look good. Look at the person on the other side of you and say, glad you came today. Come on, let them know. Listen, I am Daniel Groves. I have the privilege and honor of being a part of Hope City. I'm one of the teaching pastors, and I'm so excited. Now, listen, I got to say this, because how many of y'all have been in a service with me before? Wave at me. Come on. Cool. How many of y'all have never been in a service with me before? Oh, okay, cool. Well, I'm white chocolate. All right. Uh, listen, Pastor Jeremy uh, is on another assignment this weekend. Uh, his amazing bride, Pastor Jennifer, is here. Can we give Pastor Jennifer a hand up? And it's been in the works for years. I've been coming here for about four years. And uh, man, God began to stir in my heart, my wife's heart, uh, the Fosters, and said, listen, it's time. It's time that we move to H-Town. So for those of you who do not know, we moved to H-Town. Come on, somebody. We're here. So I used to joke how I, I would land and then have to put deodorant like behind the knee because it's so hot. But now it's, it's a normal life. It's a routine now in our everyday life. And uh, man, we're so excited. We are uh, so, so blessed to be a part of what God is doing here. Do y'all realize we're in the middle of a movement? Yeah. Like, thank you for your overwhelming enthusiasm. Do y'all re realize that heaven has touched earth and we've gotten caught in between over, somebody needs to shout, over 30,000 people have committed their lives to Jesus in the past four and a half years. And so for years, I talked about my amazing wife and we would put up pictures and everybody thought she was Photoshopped because they didn't know if she was real or not. And people would see us in public and they'd be like, there's no way, how did that happen? Because I'm married way out of my league, all right. Uh, I had a lot of hair when we got married. Let's be honest, God has a sense of humor. He's like, I'm gonna take that away from you to keep you humble. <laughs> and I'm gonna give you a beard. But my beautiful wife is here as well. I love you, baby, thank you. You're the best. Before we jump in today, because I'm fired up, I can't tell, I, can't, I don't know if you guys can tell how fired up I am, but I, I had two Bang Energy drinks and four shots of premium espresso. And I'm in a lot of Jesus, I'm cranked today. Uh, but we're super excited because I believe, how many guys have really jumped in and taken 21 days of prayer? Seriously, come on, wave at me. It's been a game changer, and we're going to dive into that a little bit deeper. But before we do, before we jump into what God has for us today, I want to honor two people because we're sitting in this room. We've got additional seating. We've got Katie, Cypress, and Cornerstone joining us, all because two people simply said yes to the call of God on their lives. Will you give your pastors, Pastors Jeremy and Jennifer Foster, a huge hand? Love you. I woke up really grateful this morning. I got up super early before, you know, emails started coming in and phones started ringing and pages and not pages. <laughs> if you still wear a pager, I want to meet you. <laughs> but text messages and I, I like to get up super early and spend time in the presence of God. And I, I woke up really grateful today because I, I, I realized again today that the one who's been standing with us and the one who's been standing for us will always be stronger than the one who's been standing against us. And God has been fighting for you and defending you in battles that you didn't even know about. You woke up again today and you're breathing, which is proof that God's not done with your life yet. Like his face was made to shine upon you once again. And I've got great news for you. You have survived 100% of your worst days. Let that sink in. Like you're here. And you showed up, and somebody might have invited you and told you they were going to buy you a steak if you would come, and it's a steak taco from Taco Bell. <laughs> but you showed up, and I believe God wants to unlock something. There's four specific areas that we're really passionate about here at Hope City. Number one, we want you to know God. It's really, really important. Week in and week out, inside of this room, inside of our other campuses, but also outside, we want you to know God. And then secondly, we want you to find freedom. We want you to be healed from things that you've been holding on to for a long time. We want you to discover your purpose because we believe that every single one of you have a purpose and a call and giftings that can be used and unlocked. Ultimately, number four, to make a difference. We're not all called to do everything, but we're all called to do something. So if you're sitting here like, I just don't know if there's a place for me, the answer is a resounding yes. There is somewhere for you to get plugged in. I want to encourage you, go through Growth Track, join a connect group, be a part of what God is doing here because heaven's touching earth and I believe that people are coming alive, purpose is unlocking in people's lives and I believe the best of our days are the rest of our days. Y'all believe that today? Come on, shout, clap, high five, do something. So we are in our final stretch, one week left in our 21 days of prayer we have this as a resource, as a tool for you. You can grab it at Next Steps in the lobby. We have our Pray First prayer guide 
This is something that's helping all throughout 21 days, but it's also a resource that you can use beyond the 21 days. It ends next Saturday, but as believers and as sons and daughters, our prayer life doesn't stop on Saturday, amen? But this prayer guide is an amazing resource. It's free to you. We also have these really cool bands that say pray first. You can wear it as a consistent reminder that you need to pray first. So we're gonna actually go in that direction this weekend, and the title of my sermon, if you're taking down notes, and I always encourage you to take notes, Harvard did a study that if you're a hearer only, you only retain 5% in real time what you're listening to. So the only thing you're gonna walk away with is, I can't remember his name, but white chocolate, the 5%. If you take down notes in real time, it goes up to 35% retention rate. If you actually go back and maybe watch the live stream, rebroadcast, and you actually go back and reread your notes, your retention rate goes up as high as 90 to 95%. So if you're taking down notes, well, I don't have it, elbow the person next to you, borrow an eyeliner, I don't care what you gotta do, <laughs> rattle on your arm, put it in your iPhone or iPad. If you have a droid, the Lord is merciful. <laughs> His grace is sufficient. We'll do an altar call for you at the end. But write this down if you're taking down notes. The title of my sermon is Living Life Out of the Overflow. Come on, say overflow. overflow. Living your life, living life out of the overflow. Our passage, our foundational verse as we open is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. It says this, God is able. See, I like that. It doesn't say he might be able. It says God is able to make all grace overflow. Say overflow. To you so that you, so that because you have enough of everything in every way at all times, you will overflow. Say overflow. In every good Work. So we're talking about prayer and we're talking about overflow. I read a really startling statistic. They did a study in Americanized Christianity. They said the average Christian, I don't believe this is Hope City, but they're saying across America, the study showed that the average Christian reads their Bible, ready for this, 13 minutes a month. 13 minutes, like a baker's dozen, like 13 minutes a month, not a day, the entire month. They say the average Christian prays, get, get ready, 21 minutes a month, and that includes over your food. 21 minutes a month. See, we've gotten caught up in a instant gratification sort of culture. We've gotten caught up in a drive-through sort of mentality where 60-second devotional is what you're living off of. I have 59 seconds of fire every day. Now, before you throw DMs at me like, oh, he's anti-devotionals and throw shade at me. No, no, no. I believe devotionals are really important as supplements. See, see I, I like to take vitamins and supplements. You can get a beard like this without taking some vitamins and supplements, y'all. Come on, sorry. I like supplements. They're important, but they don't fuel me every day. They're supplemental because I like to eat food. How many of y'all like to eat food, man? Where's my foodies at? Come on. And H-Town has a lot of good food. Like, you guys are, I've gained my freshman 20. Leave me alone, okay? <laughs> but I believe that if you will be intentional this week and really take this last week serious, I believe God wants to unlock supernatural breakthrough in your life. God's presence is not just a painkiller where you show up and it's like an ibuprofen to a headache. He wants to heal your entire life. The average Christian Praise for 21 minutes a month. My wife and I were on the West Coast. We were doing a conference and afterwards we were eating and, and the guy was like, we were all sitting around and I'm, I'm a little old school in the sense of tradition. Now I know this champion combo maybe has thrown you off, <laughs> off a little bit. I need an endorsement by the way, champion. Um, I'm doing the shoes and the jacket. Like it's a whole combo. But I believe that we haven't gotten so caught up in the routine of life and I'm not legalistic about it, but I believe we could take a moment and just thank God. God, thank you for this food. So we're sitting there about to eat. And I said, uh, who's praying for the food? And everybody's kind of looked at me funny. Because I think we can pause and say, God, thank you. That you're blessing this food. I woke up again today and I'm breathing. Your mercy is new every morning. You made your face to shine upon me once again. God, I pray that you bless this food. Lord, if anybody had pink eye in the kitchen, God, I pray that... <laughs> I don't need an amoeba today, Lord. I don't need a full body cleanse from, so God bless it. Take sickness far from the midst of us. Come on, how many of y'all know what I'm talking about? But I asked, who's, pre who's, pr who's praying over the food? And they laughed. And they said, well, we, we, we actually do something really cool January 1 of every year. By the way, this is a terrible idea. So if you're taking down a notes, this is not like a pearl. Okay, I'm not giving you pearls here. 
They say we pray at the beginning of every year that God would bless all of our food for the whole year. That was my response. I thought they were kidding. I was like, that's hilarious. Rob, are you praying? Come on, Cody, you got this? Come on, pray. And they were like, no, no, we literally pray for all of our food and we pray for all of our groceries for the whole year. Y'all, has prayer gotten so inconvenient that we can't take, they said, because we don't want to waste time during the, has it gotten to be a waste of time where we're starting to treat prayer like the glass box on the wall that says break in case of emergency? Well, I guess if you're going through it, wow, that's really a lot. I guess you should just pray. Now, Pastor Jeremy said last week, prayer should be your first priority, not your last resort. Here's what the Bible says about priorities. Write this down if you're taking down notes. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. We'll have it on the screens. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. That means as your highest priority. And live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, when you seek me in prayer and worship, you will find me available to you if you seek me with all of your heart. Write this down if you're taking down notes. The place of abundance and overflow in your life is found in the place of obedience. If you wanna pull out a phone and screenshot that, you can. The place of abundance and overflow in your life is found in the place of obedience. Here's the truth, though. Obedience is a choice. This whole free will thing, we have a choice to be obedient or not. My wife and I have four kids, 10, eight, three, and five months. And we're like, are you Amish? We're just trying to keep up with Pastor Jeremy and Jennifer. <laughs> we are constantly teaching our kids to be obedient. And God, again, he's not forcing obedience on us. This is a choice for us to posture ourselves. The Bible says this in 1 Peter 5, 6. It says, humble yourself. That's a choice. Under the mighty hand of God. And it says this, and he will lift you up. But again, it's a choice to posture yourself in a position of obedience. I can't stress enough the importance of this week, finishing strong in our 21 days of prayer and positioning yourself intentionally in his presence because I believe this will create a lifestyle, a connection, a daily routine with the Lord. We have to stay connected. Say, we have to stay connected. Come on, stay connected with me. John 15, five says this, I am the vine and you are the branches. Okay, so he's the life source, we're the branches. And then this, if you look at the very first word, if you remain in me, again, it's a choice. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. It says this, write this down if, if you're gonna grab this too. When prayer becomes your priority, miracles become your lifestyle. When prayer becomes your priority, miracles in your life become your lifestyle. You're not surprised when your son or daughter who's gotten caught up in the prodigal life comes home. You're not surprised when there's a layoff. But Philippians chapter four, verse 19 says, my God shall supply all my needs according to the riches and glory. God, I know that you've got my back and you're my source. When the doctor says you're gonna deal with this the rest of your life, you say thank you for your professionalism and then you go back to the great physician because when prayer is your priority, miracles become your lifestyles. You can praise him, that's okay. I'm giving you a lot of verses today. I'm a Bible guy. 1 John 5, 14 says, this is the confidence. Man, I like that. This is the confidence we have when approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So prayer cultivates priorities, but prayer also cultivates a life of intimacy. I love what Bishop T.D. Jake says about intimacy. He said, intimacy equals into me see. But again, this is another posture. This is a posture of humility. It's a posture of obedience. We can live our lives two ways. We can live our lives like, God, I'm gonna compartmentalize and hold on to all these things and not really let you see the real me. But you know the truth is, God can't use who you pretend to be. And so for me, I wanna live my life in a posture that's open-handed. So God, I need you, John chapter three, verse 30, to become greater and greater as I become less and get out of the way. I need you to look at my life, take a snapshot of where I'm at right now. Is there any distractions in my life that's muddying the waters of my purpose? Is there anything in my life, is there a toxic relationship that I've allowed access in? Is there something I've been watching or listening to that's gonna reflect in my heart and muddy the waters of my influence tomorrow? We have to position ourselves into me see for God to be able to remove, and it's kind of painful sometimes for him to remove some things that have been standing in the way. 
of what he wants to do through you. Into me see. You know God sees you. Maybe you felt overlooked and undervalued and underappreciated. Maybe people forget your name. You're like, why can't they just get Sarah? I just don't understand. You know, in this place of surrender, you feel those wounds and that insignificant feelings. You'll feel the presence of God go in and repair and restore and put stitches where there's been Band-Aids. I want you to know he sees you. And sometimes in that hidden place, it feels like an isolated place. But you know, a lot of beautiful things come out of hidden places. You know, in a dark room, when they're about to develop film in the dark place, in that hidden place, something comes out that's beautiful. My wife carried four babies in the womb, in that dark place, that hidden place. They were formed, Psalms 139, 14, fearfully and wonderfully made. So sometimes that hidden place, God's actually refining you and shaping you to step into who he has called you to be. How many of y'all are excited about God shaping and refining into me? See, also in this place of surrender, I love this. There's healing and strength. The Bible says this in Isaiah 40, verse 29. He gives strength to the weary and increases power to the weak. You know, sometimes we try to heal ourselves. And a lot of times this goes into a form sometimes of self-medication. I, self -medi I, I, I come from a long line of addiction and brokenness in my family and the dynamics of my family was we filled all the dark places and the voids with alcohol and drugs and cheating and beating up people and all kinds of stuff. In my family, statistically, I should have ended up a hustler. I should have ended up really messed up. In my family, when you're married, you have three girlfriends on the side. Now, I married a country girl, so she'd be like, okay, that's what you said. Okay, let's go. <laughs> She's like, all right, let's go. <laughs> right now. But because of the place of surrender, there was strength and God restored my family, restored my dad, rearranged our Jerry Springer family and took our family from broken to breakthrough because in this place of surrender, there's strength, there's healing, there's restoration. Here's the truth though. If you don't get healed from what hurts you, you will bleed on people that did not cut you. And that's why I wanna stress continually during this last weak, get in his presence. Let him heal you and restore you and do some things in your life that only he can do so that you can rise up and be who you're called to be. So here's a fun fact. I'm making this a little lighter. Uh, this is actually kind of a celebratory moment. This is a milestone for us. Uh, now, my wife and I just celebrated in July 15 years of marriage. Come on, somebody. That's huge. Big deal in my family that we made it at all. Like, never should have made it. <laughs> but 15 years is amazing, and sky's the limit. I can't wait. But I, uh, the end of next month, I will have celebrated, and this is gonna come as a massive shock. I use a lot of hot oils. Uh, I will have celebrated 20 years of full-time ministry next month. Isn't that amazing? It's a huge milestone. Again, in my family, statistically, I never should have made it. That's a big deal. My first pastor would really push us to learn the word. That's why I'm a Bible guy. He would push us and push us to grow because there's a difference between just being agreeable and teachable. I said, never stop growing. I said, never stop growing. I mean, never stop growing. So as I've read through the Bible, page after page, Genesis all the way to Revelation, not one time could I find where it says, just worry about it. Like really get super anxious about this. Like, oh, you're going through a lot, just fix it on your own. You can do it in your own strength. No, never, I can't find it. This is what it says over and over. It clearly says to trust God. This is what the Bible says in Philippians chapter four, verse six, I love the message translation. It says, don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness. Everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. Say, settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Here's something else that I believe will help us close out 21 days of prayer strong. God will never give you a life where he's not necessary. He wants our trust, our dependency. He wants us to rely and depend on him like a good, good father. He wants us to trust him in every area of your lives, even the broken places that you think you're hiding from him. 
He wants every area. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter three, verse five and six, it says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Now this part right here is where we struggle in our humanity. And lean not. That's tough. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways submit to him and he will make your paths straight. The other thing I believe that we're gonna get out of this final week of prayer is I believe God wants to clean, refresh, renew, and wash our way of thinking. Because you know, we believe what we say about ourselves more than what others say about ourselves. So when a thought comes in, write this down, this might be really good for somebody, think twice, speak once. If you think, well, I'm dumb, I'm stupid, I just, I never can figure out, don't speak it. The Bible says in Job 22, 28, I decree a thing and it shall be established. Proverbs 18, 21 says the death in life is in the power of your tongue. So choose life. I believe when you're intentional this week, God wants to renew our minds. Pastor Jeremy said a few weeks ago in one of the sermons, you can't live a positive life with a negative mind. That's why it's really good to wash and be refreshed and get in the word and hear what the Lord says about you. Because what he doesn't say about you is the tag that some of you are wearing that says fragile, damaged goods. He doesn't say that about you. He speaks life into you. This is what it says in Romans chapter 12, verse two. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. Here's the other thing. When the way you think changes, the way you speak changes, and then you recognize the authority you have as sons and daughters. Y'all, you're a king's kid. Do you recognize that? Like when the enemy is trying to mess with your joy, because he knows Nehemiah eight ten says the joy of the Lord is your. So he knows if I can just rob her of her confidence, if I can just mess with his joy, then I'll rob him of his strength. The Bible also says in James chapter four verse seven that you have the authority, not what I say about you, but what you say about you. You have the authority to resist the devil, and he shall flee. So when he starts messing with you and telling you that you're worthless and you have no value, say, whoa, 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 I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm blessed coming in and blessed going out. Oh, you're one of those blabbing, grabbing guys. No, this is what the Bible says. Speak life. And when you spend time in his presence, this confidence and this courage and this boldness begins to rise up in you. And you start looking in the mirror and say, hey, devil, uh, you're going to get tired before I do because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I believe that. All right, say this out loud with boldness. Additional seating, all of our other campuses. Say this right now. Say overflow. Come on. Say it really bold. I'm going to count to three. One, two, three. Overflow. I'm going to ask that my Nigerian sensation friend, Shata, comes on out. All right. Shata. Hey. Shata. All right, that's enough. This is ridiculous. That was pretty fancy, though. Doc. So Shata and I are like ebony and ivory in perfect harmony. He also is uh, like a Nigerian action figure doll in real life. I had this thought. The Lord showed me something. I'm not going to hyper-spiritualize this, but my wife and I were on a worship tour, and we were in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and we were resting for the night. There was this rickety table sitting outside, and I went out there, and I sat down, and I've only had this happen a couple times in my life, but I felt like the Lord showed me a vision. Again, I'm not going to hyper-spiritualize it, but I saw the Lord showing me this, this example right here. He showed me this, this white coffee cup or tea cup, if you're real fancy. And he showed me a, a simple plate, like a saucer. And he said, if you'll spend time with me every day, I'm going to fill you up. If you'll make time to spend time in my presence every day, I'm going to fill you up. But then we read these statistics about 13 minutes a month. We read these statistics about 21 minutes of prayer a month. So we're almost just kind of throwing our prayers just kind of randomly. Just kind of trying to fill our lives up with just, just like you can't differentiate between this mist so many times we just kind of throw out randomness in our prayer life. And we love to say hashtag praying. We, we love that. This is an epidemic now. Like, oh, you're going through a lot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post the emoji praying hands and maybe the fire emoji. And we're just kind of like, hey, hashtag praying for you. <laughs> just kind of throwing it out there. But this is even worse. We encounter people 
You know that coworker, Barbara? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> that one lady that really bothers you. And we're like, oh, I, I, I didn't realize you were going through all of that. Uh, I'll be praying for you. <laughs> just kind of randomly just saying it. I'll be, I'll be praying for that. I didn't realize you were going through all that. And sometimes in our human nature, we think, God, I'm not going through that. I'll, I'll be praying for that. And I was uh, on a plane a couple weeks ago. And uh, I'm just being really transparent. I was on this flight and sat down next to this guy. And the first impression was really bad. Like, he opened up with like an entire sentence with swear words. Like, it was really impressive, I'll be honest with you. I was like, this is extremely creative and awful. And, and, and he was just going in, he's like, man, you got a sweet beard, you're like a lumberjack. And he tried to touch my beard. I'm like, bro, that's assault, don't touch my beard. Fear the beard, doc, stay away from the beard. And an hour and 45 minutes in my time with him, I heard the Lord say, I'll put you next to him. Begin to ask him his story, battling serious PTSD, served our country with four deployments, five of the seven men that were with him one of the first Afghanistan and Iraq trips he was on have committed suicide. He said, man, I'm afraid I'm next. I battle fear. I wake up every night in the middle of the night panicked, seeing things that I saw that I can't get out of my head. We were about to land. They brought the jet bridge up, and I said, man, it was good hanging out with you. I'm praying for you. And I felt super convicted, y'all, because I got caught up in what we do so routinely, that I watched him walk away, and I felt the Lord say, all of that time, and you didn't even close it, you just said, I'm praying for you, and you just kind of threw it out there. So when I came off the plane, and I looked for him, where's he at? I couldn't find him, went to the bathroom, he's not in here, went down to the baggage claim, I couldn't find him, and then I saw him, and I, I kind of came up a little anxious, like, hey, man. <laughs> I've, been looking, I've been looking for you. And he said, well, what's up? And I said, um, Man, I wanna apologize. The Lord told me to pray for you. And he said, hey man, I'm not that, I'm not really religious. And I said, bro, I'm not religious at all either. <laughs> at all. You know what I am though? I'm a son. I found a relationship with Jesus. And he told me to come over and talk to you. And I heard your story. And I wanna pray simply for hope and peace. You know, if there's any area of your life that feels hopeless, then it's under the influence of a lie. God will heal and restore your entire life. And so I'm standing there, and I didn't just say hashtag praying. I actually prayed for him. What if we step up and do what the Word tells us to do? And we look like Colossians 3.17 that says, Everything I do and everything I say, I do it as a representative of Jesus. You realize he was reading my life more than he'll probably ever read the Bible? But I stood there and I prayed for him. And I felt the Holy Spirit begin to shift and move in his life. So the Lord showed me, going back to my illustration, the Lord showed me in Albuquerque, if you'll spend time with me every day, I'm gonna start filling. And if you'll let me fill, I'll fill and I'll fill. Now I'm a dad of four, so when the thing started getting to the top, I said, oh my God, it's about to overflow. And God said, yeah, 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 let it overflow. Because right there, just let it overflow. Let it overflow. Because this is what the Lord showed me. He said, it's out of the overflow that there's miracles. It's out of the overflow that you have the boldness you need. It's out of the overflow that you have the courage and confidence and the drive and the determination. It's out of the overflow. Say overflow. And then the Lord showed me this. He said, all of the residue that's on the cup, that's your witness. So when you walk into a room, you don't have to be wearing a shirt that said Godweiser instead of Budweiser to be a witness. Okay, when you walk into a room, the atmosphere truly changes because you have a residue of Jesus on your life. And then he showed me what's in the cup, that's for you. That's the grace that we talked about in the opening passage that overflows. It's everything you need when you need it. You know the thing that's amazing about God? John 10, 10 says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but God came to give us life and life more abundantly, so he doesn't just stop there. He, he wants to fill you up to an even greater place of capacity. And his grace and his mercy never stops. And here's the cool thing about it, because you can see this tank, you're like, wow, there's already so much in there. Yeah, because he started us all with a certain measure. Ah, it actually says the same measure of faith. But as we spend time with him, he'll start filling. God, I just thank you today that you use my hands because there's healing in my hands and your word is on my lips. Now, you know what's funny is the negative pessimist says, oh, 
<laughs> it wasn't even enough. It didn't even overflow, but this is how good God is every time because he's not a forcer. He'll never force himself on you, but he'll fill every time. You need wisdom, make room, he'll fill. You need joy, make room, he'll fill. You need boldness, make room, he'll fill. And he'll just keep on filling. 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 So again, the overflow, that's where God wants us to live our life out of. There's miracles. You know, with the guy in the airport, I didn't get weird about it. I didn't fill my hand with anointing oil, like, hold still, I'm gonna slap you in the mouth. Like, that's super weird. We don't have to be weird about this. You can choose to be a lot of things. Choose to be authentic. Choose to show people that being a disciple of Jesus, a Christian simply means Christ-like. When you live out of this place, yeah, but... I'm a, little, I'm a little backward. I wouldn't even know what to say. You know what? Paul actually covered that for us. He said, it's not with my enticing words. It's not with my perfect oratory delivery, but it's the demonstration and the power of the Holy Spirit in my life that just keeps on overflowing and overflowing, and he will fill you up every day. Would you give Shatai a hand? Thank you so much, my friend. Bro, we should work out sometime together. Never going to do that. I've been doing this new thing I just started. It's called Sit and Be Fit. <laughs> Very spiritually strong, but I'm bringing this in for a landing. My wife and I were on a trip, and we were in Prattville, Alabama. Not a lot of people know where that's. Oh, wow. Okay. Praise God. <laughs> she caught it. She's like, where? <laughs> it's corridor between Montgomery and Birmingham, we were doing a conference there, and it was eight straight days, two services a day, morning and night, morning. So we were just tired. Like, we were really tired. My wife said, babe, you are, you're at your limit. You, we need to take a breather. I saw books a million over here. Let's just go and sit. I said, okay. So just Dan and Jackie, normal people, like, no, not hyper-spiritualizing this. We just went. And then she's brilliant. She has her master's degree in counseling, so she was probably reading. <laughs> and I was, like, coloring in a coloring book or something. <laughs> But we're just sitting there, just spending time, hanging out, decompressing. And there was a barista sitting off to the side, and she stood up and walked over to the front of the counter, and she's wiping down the counter. And she started, she was working at the Cup of Joe there. She was really awkward, because she wasn't just looking at us, like glancing, she was just. Like, I thought it was a mannequin. Like, she went to the bathroom and left like a mannequin there. But she wouldn't break eye contact. Like, and I'm always aware of my surroundings. I'm like, okay, she's still like, okay, this is weird. So I look over to my wife and I said, hey, babe. She said, mm-hmm. And I said, um, do you see the girl over there staring at us? And she said, I do. And I said, do you have your pepper spray? <laughs> so she's not going to catch me off guard. I'll just get her with the habanero spray. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sneak up on me. And she said, baby, she went to the conference. I said, that's it. It's not a very big area. So I'm like, hey. And she was like, oh. And I was like, that's not it. Like, that freaked her out. <laughs> but for like a premium 25 minutes, she stared at us. I'm starting to get a little weirded out by it. So I'm like shifting my chair, but like the reflection in the window, I can still see her. I'm like super creepy, right? So finally she walks over to the table next to us and none of this is exaggerated or made up. She walks over and she starts wiping the table next to us and throws the rag down and walks over and goes, hey. And we're like, hey, you. She said, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but for the past 20, 25 minutes, I've been watching you. And like, we're in perfect, we're in sync here. So we're like, who us? Like, you were looking at us? Did we do something wrong? What? Her words, listen. She said, between Montgomery and Birmingham is Prattville. It's one of the busiest stores in the nation. Books a million. We set records every year. One of the busiest stores. Thousands come through here. She said, I work this counter. I work this counter every day. And I see people come and go, come and go. But when you two walked in, her words, the whole atmosphere changed. I didn't have a hat on that said, need prayer, ask me how, right? I didn't have an amp clip to my belt that said, we're Christians. We're gonna pray at table eight, which means new beginnings. If you need one, come see us. Like, it's super weird. I'm just sitting there. She said, um, my dad traveled. My dad traveled all over the world. It was a tent revival evangelist. And we're like, oh, wow. 
She said, then he would come home and he would drink a bottle of Jack Daniels and he would black out and he'd come to and beat my mom and my brother and me until our eyes were so shut. He'd say, I'm sorry, and he'd go right back to doing the work of the Lord. She said, I don't even know why I'm saying this to you. We haven't said a word yet. I don't even know why I'm saying this to you, but I've hated God for the past 27 years of my life. I've hated him every day until 25 minutes ago when you two walked in the room. I'm drawn to you for a reason. She was drawn because of the residue. And God gave us everything we needed in the moment and out of the overflow Jackie stood up and said, can I hug you? And she said, please don't touch me. I don't let anybody touch me. I have it for years. And she had cuts and self-affliction all over her arms. My wife said, okay. My wife said, it's not a coincidence you came over here. My husband and I are actually in ministry. We came here and the girl interrupted her and said, you didn't come here for you. You came here for me. And we said, we did. We came here for you. So you found people, find people. If you've been rescued and you've been found, you should be looking daily at who and what storm you're getting in the way of. Stop being so caught up in the me, myself, and I culture that you don't see people connected to your destiny. My wife said, we want to pray for you. And literally in real time, this guy's like, can I get a mint frappuccino? I'm like, shut your mouth. Like, I'll come make it, but give me a minute. Like, I'm sanctified, but not that sanctified. Wait. <laughs> My wife began to pray. When she said, in Jesus' name, amen, the girl fell in her arms. You know, she's serving at a local church. God has totally restored her life from broken to breakthrough, from broken to beautiful. Because two normal people got in the way of her storm and pointed her to Jesus. She pulled out this full pack, brand new pack of cigarettes. And she's like, I feel so free. Like her face literally had changed. You could see joy. She said, what should I do with these? And I said, let's throw them out. She said, they're brand new. Should we give them away? I'm like, no, no, we're not going to give them away. I'm grateful that God, if he's going to move, if he's going to allow heaven to touch earth, my prayer is that we would get caught in between and that we would live our lives out of the overflow and really be who we're called to be. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, I love the message translation. It says, but you are the ones, talking about you, chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work. That doesn't mean you have to have a microphone or play an instrument. You're the church. You're the body of Christ. We're better together. We're all in this together. And if we all live our lives out of the overflow as God's instruments, read this, to do his work and speak out for him, to tell others the night and day difference he made in you. How many, by the show, wave at me if he's made a night and day difference in you. Watch this. From nothing to something. From rejected to accepted. Will you stand to your feet? As we bring this in for a landing and y'all can still beat the Baptist to Golden Corral. Come on, somebody. Would you do this with me? Would you lift your hands in a posture that's open-handed? And I'm not going to give you the words to say, but will you begin to ask the Lord to search your heart? John chapter 3, verse 30, I quoted it earlier. Become greater and greater as we become less. Will you ask God to remove anything and everything in your life that has been muddying the waters or distracting you or keeping you from living your life out of the overflow. And will you begin to ask God right now in this moment, God, fill me up, fill me up. Just ask him as daughters and sons, say, fill me up. Fill me up, Lord. Fill us up to a place of overflow where we recognize that there's healing in our hands. Download hope and peace into every life in this room and additional seating at our other campuses. God, fill us up, fill us up. You ask him, say, Lord, fill me up today. Fill me up today. I want to be used by you. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run. I want to run. 
on, even bolder, even bolder. Say, say, say. Fill me up till I overflow. Cause I wanna run over. I wanna run down just for a minute. If you'll close your eyes, maybe you're here this morning. And you say, Pastor Daniel, here's the reality. I, I don't know Jesus like you're talking about. This whole analogy, this is cool, overflow and strength and all that, but the truth is, I don't know him as my savior. I mean, I'd like to. Something in my heart has been convincing me of the fact all weekend long that there's more to life than the way I've been living it. Today, I want to surrender to Jesus so I can live my life out of the overflow. I want to know God. I believe today I'm going to find freedom. I want to discover my purpose and I want to make a difference. Or maybe you're the second invitation. And I, I can say this as family now, that we don't pray prayers of Hope City for symbolic reasons, but the Bible says in Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and you will be saved. Maybe the second invitation, we will never embarrass you. We will never call you out. It's between you and God. But in just a moment, I'm gonna ask at the count of three that you just lift up your hand and say, I wanna get my life right with God. Or maybe the second invitation, you said, I used to walk with Jesus, but I've gotten caught up in the prodigal life. And I wanna make things right with Jesus today. With every eye closed, Katie, Cypress, Cornerstone, additional seating, and here at West Houston. One, I wanna get my life right with God. Two. I want to rededicate. If that's you, three, lift up your hand. Hands going up all over the main auditorium, and I'm sure across the other campuses, hands going up everywhere. God, I thank you for this act, this first act of surrender. This gift is free to you. It's been paid for by Jesus, and we're about to pray according to the word in Romans 10. Say this with me. Say, Jesus, here I am. I've been living for me, and it hasn't worked. From this day on, I'm going to live for you. Every mistake, every sin, my entire past, I ask for your forgiveness. And I confess you now as my Father, my Savior, and my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Hope City, would you give the Lord a shout of praise? Rejoice along with heaven for every person that gave their life to Jesus today. Yeah! Would you do me a favor? Would you be seated across all campuses as... Pastor Kevin comes to transition and land this. Grab this challenge this week. Finish strong. Allow God to fill you up to a place of overflow so that we can really start being who God has called us to be. Y'all believe that this week? Y'all believe that this is a week of miracles, a week of breakthrough? In Jesus' name. Give Pastor Kevin a hand as he comes. Awesome.